Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. I am pleased to announce that we didn't scare Cricket away because this week we have yet another sponsored Cricket video, and I am so excited. Someone just, someone just pinched me. Like, I just feel like I've made it if we're talking about Cricket here on this channel. Obviously, with so many of us getting ready for summer events next year, one thing that's on a lot of our minds are save the dates. Now, save the dates are typically sent out about 12-ish months in advance before your event. So right about now, if any of you are having summer events next year, this is when you kind of start to think about them. I've got some thoughts and some ideas and some opinions on save the dates, but I'm going to save those for once we finally get into the video. So thanks again to Cricut for <laughs> being willing to take a chance again on the crazy wedding planner lady who's kind of literally obsessed with you. And uh, without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. So in my opinion, save the dates aren't really entirely necessary, but that doesn't mean that I'm not on board with sending them out, especially because they can really help logistically for people who are traveling from out of town, out of state, or even out of the country. The reason that you send out save the dates is you want to make sure that someone holds your day for you. And typically that's done with just a simple message of save the date, your names, and the date that they should be saving, and the location within which you will be having your event. Just generally the city and state, you don't have to put the venue at that point in time, but it's just like putting a soft hold on their social plans to let them know like, hey, don't leave me, I'm getting married that day. And a lot of times people will pin them to their fridge, hang on to them for a little bit, just to serve as a reminder for when your big day is. But once your big day happens, it no longer holds much importance to a lot of people. And I do get some flack for this sometimes because like I. I love a good invitation. You guys know I have a scrapbook of your invitations that you send me. By the way, the P.O. box is down below if you want to send your invitation or your save the date to me. I personally love them, but I know that a lot of people don't. So obviously, as you guys know, I love finding like budget-friendly ways of DIYing something, making it look like it's not DIY'd, but also being intentional about uh, like what we're making. And so it got me thinking about save the dates and like, obviously I keep all of them that you guys send me. But for the most part, I don't tend to keep a lot of things like Christmas cards or um, save the dates before I was a wedding planner. It just wasn't of interest to me. But what I do keep are photographs. So you know me, I'm like, how can we do this? How can we send a photograph? Not something with the word save the date written on it because that's not something that most people are gonna keep for a long time. But an actual photograph, but still communicate this. Do you, get where, do you get where I'm going with this? You see where I'm like, so my wheels went turning and I came up with the coolest idea. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna be, okay, I'm over explaining. Look at, look at that. <laughs> Isn't it not so cute? Okay, I'm gonna put it in front of a blue piece of paper because these lights, of course, you know, gotta make my skin look glowy for you, but it makes this a little bit more reflective. So I will show you it on this blue piece of paper. See, you gonna focus? No, focus on this, not my glowy face. Look how stinking cute is that. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna put it back on the picture because it's just too cute. You guys, I came up with a save the date that people will actually want to save. <laughs> With using my Cricut, I was able to not only cut out this acrylic itself to be a cover for the photo, but also do my very own gold foil lettering. Very hard to see in this lighting, but trust me, it's there. It's there. <laughs> but then afterwards, they can take it out and keep a cute picture of your faces forever. I'm yelling, I'm sorry. <laughs> so like, I'm just so excited about this idea. Okay, so now let's just like get into the actual tutorial, Jamie, come on. Y'all already know what time it is. Supply roll call. I got this craft plastic acrylic off of Amazon. You can get it pre-cut, but then I wouldn't be able to show off my fancy Cricut machine, now would I? Two levels of grip mats, one strong and one standard, and my new Cricut maker. <laughs> I am unwell. This is like the bougie version of what I've been using for the last few years and I'm so happy for the upgrade. Now, the last few times I've done a Cricut craft, I've told you about how easy it is to import a font into the uh, Cricut design space because I really love consistent branding. Man, I, I probably drive you guys absolutely nuts with all of this every time I bring this up, but I really like for things to look the same. So I selected a font off of Google Drive, downloaded it, opened my font book on my MacBook, and simply pulled the whole folder over. Then all I gotta do is quit design space, reopen it, and the font will magically appear. Now it's time to cut the acrylic. Again, like I said, you can get this pre-cut on Amazon, but I didn't know that existed. <laughs> so I cut out all the sheets myself. 
Now, after doing some research, I did see that if you're gonna cut something this heavy duty, it is wise to tape it down with painter's tape to make sure that it all stays in place because with thicker material like acrylic, it's going to need to take several passes. Now, although this is a slightly different size because it's a four by six photo instead of five by seven, which is common for a save the date, uh, honestly, in my opinion, I think the trade-off is well worth it because someone gets an actual photo out of this. So I measure out the cuts that I want the Cricut to make, uh, which is obviously the same exact size as the photo themselves. So in my last video, I mentioned that there were a ton of materials that a Cricut can cut. Now with my Cricut maker, it is even more. Y'all, we're talking hundreds of different materials that I can't even begin to tell you each and every single one of them. Now, when I looked up acrylic, they didn't have the exact option that I was looking for, so I went based off the thickness of the acrylic instead, made sure my knife blade was attached, and started cutting. Now, because this machine is totally brand new to me, I actually did a couple different iterations and like a couple different depths, and I ended up finding that I liked the basswood setting the most because that's when the Cricut knife blade will actually repeatedly go over the same line over and over and over again to ensure a really smooth cut. As with all new crafting toys, sometimes it does take a little bit of trial and error, so I'm glad I was able to go through and find the right setting. Definitely go for the basswood setting over the chipboard that I showed. And look at that, perfect cut. Now let's get to the actual script. For this one, I'm using East Liberty Signature, which is actually one of the fonts that we use for the Union Podcast, which again, just a great example of how using Cricut Design Space, you can really customize stuff to match perfectly. Um, and then Abhaya Libre, which I've used on many other projects in the past. I really do love a classic serif font for this one. And as usual, you can adjust the letter spacing and the font size. What I do like about Cricut Design Space though is you have more than one option. You don't just have to be locked into a precise font size. You can instead make the text box smaller or larger until visually it looks to be the right size. Because sometimes it can be a lot of guesswork, typing in fonts, going back and forth. You can also adjust the size, the width, the height of the lettering or the object in Cricut Design Space as well. So for example, because our save the date acrylic cover is four by six. If I wanted the words to fill out that completely, I could make them four inches wide. And again, look at all of these materials. So for this vinyl, it is a metallic vinyl because it gives you the gold foil look, but then you can still DIY it to be exactly what you want to instead of ordering from a third party. For the metallic vinyl, I end up using just the regular grip mat instead of the strong grip because obviously it's not heavy duty material like the acrylic is. Cue the Cricut ASMR. <laughs> Dang, I love this thing so much. <laughs> you ready to see some magic? And boom. And just like that, all the weeding's done. I cannot get over how dainty these letters are and how well this foil cut. Mm. Also, <laughs> I looked so hard for engagement photos and couldn't find them anywhere. <laughs> Next up, the transfer tape. I absolutely love Cricut Transfer Tape because it has the grid markers on it. I always want things to be straight, I want them to be even, and so to have these grid marks, these half inch apart grid marks, really does help when doing DIY projects to make sure things are straight, level, and even. So now I'm taking my Cricut scraper thingy, mm, I don't know what it's called, and really making sure the transfer tape is pressed down onto the letters. Especially with this thin script, you want to take your time, go slow, and make sure you're not missing any section of letters. So sometimes, as you can see right here, I'll go back in and just kind of rub the corner of the scraper just a little bit to ensure that lift is happening really successfully. Definitely pull at a diagonal angle because I find it's uh, it ends up being a lot easier on the letters instead of pulling directly up from the top or down from the bottom. I'm just going to lay down a piece of orange paper so hopefully you can see this a little bit better. <laughs> But as you can see, here's why I love that transfer tape so much, because I have nice clean lines to operate off of. I was able to line up my design exactly where I wanted it to be and not have it be crooked. And now taking my scraper again and pressing the vinyl on the top of the acrylic. Okay, so maybe orange wasn't the best color to go with, but look how cute it looks. <laughs> Now I'm taking my scraper back over all the letters in the same exact manner that we did when we were lifting it up with the transfer tape. Wanting to press down on all of those edges, taking a ton of care with the very thin scripting, and then going very, very slow with the removal of the transfer tape to make sure all of the letters adhere properly because you don't want any of them going wonky or crooked on you. I can't, I can't. It's so stinking cute. <gasps> I wish you guys could see this in person. Look at that shimmer. That's such a nerd. <laughs> 
And now for the moment of magic. Now I selected this photo because it had a lot of blank space on it. You can use whatever photo you want, obviously, but I thought the save the date would rest really nicely in the trees. And then of course got this cutie little paper clip. Um, I've linked to them off of Amazon down below as well. You could use a grommet or a brad, anything to really keep these together, but I thought the gold paper clip was perfect to match the gold foiling. And look how sweet it is. And of course you can do this in black and white, or you could just pick one of your favorite selfies from one of your favorite date nights. I love the fact that the gold foiling and acrylic just add another layer of dimension and really make the design kind of pop, but it still turns it into something that people will want to keep. Because there's so many iterations of this. Like you could use this for your save the dates. You could use this for your invitations. You could use this for your thank you cards afterwards. That way you're still communicating the message that you want to, but also giving your guests, your family member, your friends, something that they will want to keep. Honestly, this whole, okay, I, I'm a total goober. Y'all know this. I'm just so excited by this. I think that this is such a fun thing because you know your aunt or your grandma or some sort of distant college roommate is going to be a lot more likely to keep a photograph of you and your partner than an entire save the date. Sure, there are a few sentimental souls out there like me who might very well put them in a memory box or in a scrapbook, but if you make something like this, your guests are a whole lot more likely to save it because this is reusable. This they can put into a frame. This they can put on their fridge. All this is actually inspired uh, by Dave um, from Amari Productions and his wife Mariah. For one year on their Christmas card, they sent a photograph with it. And I didn't keep the card itself, but I kept the photograph. And it's still on our fridge to this day. Photographs hold so much meaning. So this ups the likelihood that your guests will treasure it for a long time to come. Not to mention, you could put like whatever photos you want in there of like you and your engagement. These are actually my wedding photos because I couldn't find my engagement photos, but you get the picture. Maybe I'll use your elopement photos from this last year for your official event. Uh, print your pictures, people. <laughs> Preach your pictures. So that's all we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this save the date tutorial. If you did, be sure to give it a like down below. Um, Cricket, thanks again for taking a chance on me and I adore you and please don't leave me. <laughs> Can we do this again? Okay. If you want to see any of the products that I used in this week's video, be sure to check out in the description box down below. I will link to all of those. And if you have any cricket ideas that you want me to do for the next video, hopefully if I haven't scared them away with all of my enthusiasm in this one, uh, drop those in the comments as well. And until next week, bye guys.